Hello, um, this is my audio conventions for uh, audio productions. I think it's LO2. Um, so we'll get started. So um, the first things I'll be talking about is the common effects in music productions. Um, so there's reverberation, uh, reverberation, distortion, delay, and panning. So to begin with, with reverb, um, mainly to do with an effect um, caused by the environment, the surfaces, uh, and where the scenes take place in general. So uh, for my example, I used a kitchen. So if I were to go into my kitchen, um, it would be quite like um, enclosed and more like wet rather than a clean and dry scene. The reason why this is, is because there's a load of flat, uh, flat shiny surfaces, the walls are made from tiles or um, they do have some uh, one wall which is a bit uh, a bit wooden so that would more um, rather than reflect as much it would sort of uh, absorb it a little bit more than the other shiny surfaces but since the ceiling is quite um, it's quite bumpy the ceiling uh, which would cause the entire um, shiny surface to bump upwards and light itself all the way around the room as you can see by this representation here so uh, if I was stood in the middle um, and if I were to start playing music over the other side of my kitchen um, it would start bouncing all the way around me and I'd hear it but it wouldn't be clean sound. Um, reverb is made up from thousands of tiny delays in sound caused by the services environments like I just said a flat uh, shiny surface would produce a delay and therefore echo the sound. Uh, I think next is distortion. So it can be a post-production effect <clears throat> or an unnatural effect which was caused during the actual recording of uh, the sounds. So to be to go the uh, the thing why it does this is usually the volume itself is artificially too high and affects the sound and causes clipping. So you can see here there's a flat line, uh, that would be no sound whatsoever. These would be more of the um, the lows and highs, like it's a sound wave of how it would be. So the reds would uh, be the clipping and yellows would be more soft and original clipping. So during this time here, it's going to be a, um, a, steady, a steady sound in in the um it'll be more clean and won't have as high frequencies or as low frequencies which would be distorted where if you were if I were to scream into my mic right now you would get a lot more um distortion because the volume is artificially too high uh, it's caused by having the wrong settings on the microphone and not regulating the sound levels um on the recorder or program recording the sound and now we'll go on delay. So delay is the same clip over and over and over again, <clears throat> which either repeats the sound or causes an echo. So the effect can be caused by uh, reverb or post-production effects. So by reverb I mean, um, like I said before, the kitchen scene. That would have a little bit of delay in it. It would repeat the same uh, sound over and over until it uh, dissolves away where post-production effect I could go into logic and apply a delay artificially uh, it makes the sound repeat, uh, repeat itself and almost have an e echo effect um, an artificial one uh, usually this effect is a direct repeat of sound starting from loud and strong then gradually getting softer and more distant next we're talking about panning so you can see from the um, uh, di the uh, diagram, the left would be the left uh, speaker, so your left ear, the right would be the right one, so your right ear. Um, if you were to use panning, you could do a strong um, constant gain on the left side, but no on, none on the right, and then you could pan from left to right. Um, this is good in movies, because uh, then you get a better sense of direction with the effect happening. Um, this can be used naturally, so say a shotgun mic 
and you get the subject to move from the left to the right, there will be a panning in sound because it's not constant mono. It's not constant mono sound, it'll be stereo. So there is the left and right uh, dynamic range uh, which you can be able to hear and the sensor direction. Um, but it's basically due to two two channels having basically a, a double effect of the sound and if you're on the left side talking into the mic more volume will be on the left side of your ear where or well the right side of your ear depending on who what direction you're facing but if it was mono everything would be flat and and that's my cat um, production and post-production production is a recording stage where all of the mistakes count um, all the recordings need to be perfect before this production stage because you can treat distorted well you can't treat distorted or noisy audio compared to having a clean sound to begin with sorry about that typo <laughs> uh, post-production is where you will have um, you can have the freedom to add as much effects as you want to completely change the mood um, gives you more freedom uh, to fix any minor mistakes for the production. So the roles in audio production. Um, I came across one that was audio engineer who would keep out an eye out for the equipment, electronics, uh, checks, make sure they're in perfect good condition and make sure the set is ready recording and also um, they could do safety checks if it's an outside location um, not a studio so you, like for a, a short film or a movie someone needs to be in sound check um, safety checks as well um, there is also someone who can monitor the audio make sure it's not clipping and it's the right sound um, make sure it's the final outcome and then there's the subject itself who would basically be someone like me who would be talking into the mic, creating a dialogue or sounds for the production. Legal issues. So the issues you may come across would be uh, copyright material. It's easy to make the song based off another, but you can come into legal issues, lawsuits, company wants royalties. So if I were to make a song but had the tune of something else and just changed the lyrics or changed the pitch, it can still be recognized as someone else's because it's not mine and it will be breached copyright. Uh, YouTube does this a lot um, by including any copyright in, in your video or sound in your production uh, such as popular music um, you need to use fair use or educational use to not get any um, any sort of law breaching of contracts um, this allows you to be more safer. Um, the only thing is it won't let you earn any money from your production, but it's your own fault for using copyright material uh, without uh, without getting in contact with the host or the owner of the material to begin with. But um, an example of some songs which use the same sort of copyrighted um, would be... Uh, this is the original song, PSY Gentleman. I think they both have um, the same sort of ch uh, tune in the background. So this one came up first. And then this is Selfie. So you can tell that they're, they're quite similar in their own right. Um, it almost sounds like one key is out of place. It's more like high pitch, the other one has a little bit more low keys. But they sort of have the same... They have the same um, style to it and therefore it could be breached by copyright. Um, unless one has claims... Uh, well, they both could be breached copyright, but the selfie one would probably um, be breached more because it is kind of copying the same tune, but they've changed it a bit. But then everything's kind of copied by each other, so it doesn't matter as much. 
if they were to have just grabbed the tune and just threw it straight in there, then they'd be breaching the contract. Um, here is a representation of a studio layout. So for us at B Cut, um, our, the one I decided to do was the studio room, which is more yellow, not as professional as the other room, but it's an idea of how it will look um, in some rooms. So mainly you would have, um, for us, we just have like a workshop studio layout. Uh, for any students to work on Max, but this is the main studio recording. So, uh, the studio recording room would have the microphone, any drum set, guitars. Um, these black bo borders would be the soundproofing. Um, then there'd be a soundproof door. So anything in this room wouldn't come out to the audience or to open anyone in here. There would be a microphone in here and a microphone out here. So there would be a Mac room controlling the audio, uh, regulating the sound, um, and finally recording the actual sounds. And then audio equipment here would be, um, so the actual dials you can use to uh, sort out the levels and the pitches if you really needed to. And also, um, yeah, mainly to just sort out the levels, because that's I think that's what we worked on was the audio equipment helped with the gain and levels of the recording. And then there'd be multiple speakers all the way around the room for the um, main person in the center being able to hear a full like 360 um, recording of what's in here. So that's a pretty good setup. Um, next we're talking about recording audio formats. So to begin with, um, we have the uncompressed and lossly formats, um, which for me, I would use in between rendering. So if I were to have a mix, uh, a mix which I've made, but I really want to carry on editing it, um, but I want to keep it as it is and then add on top of it, I would render an uncompressed or lossless format so I could then go into editing and not have any of the detail lost. Um, and it's also good for final outputs to other people who will be editing doing the same thing. So multiple renders of the same sound without losing any quality. Um, these formats are FLAC, Way, uh, WAV and AIFF. I think there are a couple more, but these are the main ones which I would use. Usually I'd use uh, WAV but FLAC is quite good, um, but it's, it can um, be unreadable by some programs where WAVE, uh, WAVE or AIFF is more universal. Um, then there are formats to be used for the final consumer render, the final quality render for uh, any audience or a public member. So usually the highest quality can be uh, 322 kilobits per second or even nine, uh, 19 2 kilobits per second most of the time it is 192 kilobits per second um, so an album would be uh, rendered or bounced out in that uh, bit rate and then put on CD or on iTunes the iTunes quality is usually better but the CD uh, has a limit on there for the file size of the final output as well. But these formats are usually MP3, PCM, and sometimes they're even FLAC. Like sometimes they can be FLAC for a CD quality, and then it will be a really high bit rate. Um, it's just that if you were to export them, they would be unusable on certain programs. But they're very good for editing over <clears throat> and using for a movie production or so. Um, next we have file transfer met methods, um, for example there are um, the ones I would use which would be for backing up everything. Um, you'd have your storage on your computer, you'd have a USB drive and a hard drive or even an SD card. Um, what I would do was if it was a very temporarily job I would have everything stored on the computer but I would do an auto backup save onto an SSD 
well, an SD card or a USB card, um, just so it's it's there in case it goes corrupted or lost any of the audio or sound. The other thing would be if I was doing an intensive uh, production which needed a lot of time worked on, a lot of away time uh, from the computer itself and coming back to it, I would store it on the computer, I would then make duplicates of the programs, uh, the project files I mean, and the sound itself, put them on a hard drive, and then I'd also upload them to something like Google Drive or um, what's the other one? Dropbox. By doing this I can reassure myself that everything is backed up and secured. Because I mean if, if, I, if one file goes corrupted then it's there somewhere else. Yeah, there's no loss in that situation. Um, but I like to keep an online backup anyway for accessibility. If I were to go to college I know it's there constantly and it won't get lost um, but sometimes it's nice to know it's on your USB drive because then you have access to it anywhere anyway um, so that's a nice perk for file transferring as well but yeah the main important thing is to just back up everything um, next we have linear and non-linear recording systems um, I kind of thought like linear would be more a straightforward single recording so um, if there would be say old tracks like a tape recorder or something that can only be recorded on once rather than added on top of multiple layers and the same with like a zoom one a zoom h1 uh, you can record a track but then you can only start another where non-linear would be a system which can overlap a previous recording add on to the sound, um, this would be logic, uh, so say if I were to have any effects, I make a gunshot sound or something, I make the bass layer, add on top even more <coughs> reverb or uh, treble, add another thing, and that's my cat going crazy, cat, shush please, um, but yeah, so say I were to get my cat recording just then, I could then overlap even more stuff over that recording and it will be a non-linear recording system because basically what logic can do is it can edit multiple layers where linear is mainly just the recording process on an external recording system I hope that made sense and that my cat didn't annoy as much <laughs> uh, Profanity and blasphemy uh, this is mainly like codes and conventions in audio productions so type of language which shouldn't be used in the industry um, unless my example would be if you're a rapper or it, uh, filming for a movie or a music studio and it's respectively rated then I'm sure the codes and conventions in that area would be fine but for certain things like TV or radio there's literally no use of anything unless it's late at night, like 9 plus uh, p.m. For a live production, usually there shouldn't be any, but sometimes it can slip out, and then they have to make a public announcement, say sorry. Um, but yeah, profanity is vulgar language, so if I were to use swears, um, offensive stuff would be blasphemy. So um, saying stuff under your breath in a live production um, but yeah, overall they're things that shouldn't really be necessary in a professional environment. Um, overall, that is my entire production uh, presentation. I hope I did everything correctly and thank you for listening.